You wanted it, you got it. I am going to overclock the 980 Hall of Fame. TI. LRQ edition. All that good stuff. So, for overclocking benchmarks, um, for stability testing, I use Firmark because it's cool like that. And then Precision X, um, I used to overclock. However, um, before when I had a 980 um, Hall of Fame, it would only let me increase the voltage by 35 um, milliwatts or whatever you call it. So I don't know why that was, but I'm going to see if it's fixed or not. Fifty. It can increase, but like I've seen like two hundred millivolts. I'm sometimes able to do that. So now let me try MSI Afterburner. Let me download that. See if that gives me any higher voltage options. All right, MSI Afterburner is up, and it's been a long time since I've used this. So settings, unlock voltage control, unlock voltage monitoring. And then, okay, user mode, kernel mode, eh. restart, that's fine, it only takes a few seconds because SSD, or just restart the app, that's, that's cool too. And this also gives me 50, which is odd because, oh whatever. So I guess I'll just be using Precision X since it's simple as all hell. So 91, I should apply. And then K boost, give us the boost clock. Raise the synapse, needs to close, so go ahead and do that. And Signal Island. Don't really know what it is, but let's end it anyways. Yay. And there we go, K boost is on. And a yep, it gives us a speed of fourteen seventeen. So how much is that to get to fifteen hundred? I can't math show calculator. Eighty three. So let's go plus eighty three. And then call it a day at that. Memory clock. Alright, 1500. Stress test will begin with Fark. Just gonna do a simple 1080p stress test at 8x MSAA. CPU stress test. And I'll get back to you and let's see. 10 minutes, see if anything happens. Alright, I just realized I was running an out of date version of Firmark, so now it's up to date and running a lot smoother, going from 20 to 33 FPS at 8x MSAA at 1080p. That honestly seems slow, but whatever. If it's stressing out the GPU, then that's good. Alright, now I've got some overclock on it. Um, I have the core clock right now at stock, which in its own is 1417 MHz, so, you know, already extremely high. And I've got the memory overclocked to 4000 MHz, giving me 8 GHz effective memory. And then the LA benchmark tells me I have a 1595 graphics core, but in reality it's more like 1417, like I said before. So I'm going to leave the memory at that, since it seems to be running just fine. And the only reason why you'll see any kind of stuttering is because this is running 4K Ultra. And it looks pretty nice. Sometimes it dips to low 20s, but once again, 4K Ultra. And fan speed is auto. I don't have like full max power mode enabled yet. So, 
I shall let this keep running. Right now it's up to 70 degrees Celsius, given that it's got a fairly heavy overclock in the memory. I think that's pretty fair. Adding the full power mode should either bring it up because it's using a lot more power. Yeah, look. Using the full power mode puts it under 40%. And then the temperature starts to drop steadily because the fan speed goes up and the power increase thing increases to 11. It's not going to do very much in terms of adding FPS's because it's just going to let it run cooler. It went from 70 to about 62 right now. And that's pretty good. I'll get to you when I get a stable core clock. I'm going to try to go for 1500 as it is, so I would add 83 to the core count. I'll let you know if that's stable or not without adding, adding any voltage. So yeah. Okay, I am finding that it is incredibly stable at a 4000 megahertz memory clock and 1500 GPU clock. And that's adding no voltage. However, these stress test benchmarks are not always what they appear to be, so I shall play some games and see how stable it is. If it ends up showing artifacts or crashing, I will let you know and add the voltage. Now what to play? Not that. Steam, where are you? Library, yay, let's play one of those games. I think that testing is going relatively well, considering it hasn't crashed yet, no over voltage. Um, well, yeah, GT5 is successful at not dying, so I think it's a success. This is something that I do not expect to work. 1600 megahertz plus no over voltage and I'm going to leave the memory at the 4000, 8000 effective. So, let us run to benchmarks. If it immediately crashes, then we know it's not stable. If it has artifacts or it just goes all over the place, it's very zip. Okay. Not stable. I wasn't expecting it to be, but it was worth a shot. So somewhere between um, 14 or well, 1500 and 1600 is this place's um, spot to be without any over voltage. So we're gonna get it back up to 83. And then memory clock was 495 because it's got a 5 megahertz boost already. Apply. And we're back at 1500. The only thing to do is to just go some at a time. I will go to 1575 and see if that works. I cannot calculate her, so I have to math. Lol. Alright, I have expertly calculated without using any calculator whatsoever, I promise. At 15, well, to get to 1575, it needs to be plus 158 on the core. Close enough. I'm not a perfectionist, so I'll let it slide. If 1575 works, then hooray! You can start adding voltage and go even higher. If not, then I guess I won't be surprised. It lasted longer, as in a couple of seconds, before starting to freeze up. That's good. Okay, time to bring it down to... I'm um, 1550. See if that works. 
as it is. So reset. Need to reset in order for it to go good. Back up to 1500. And I'm using Valley Benchmark as a test so that it can do a constant thing. Along with Fermark, that's another good program. So, 1550, 83 plus 50, I can't math. Once again, I'll expertly do it. 133. We're now at 1550, and hey, it doesn't have 151 to upset perfectionists. Alright, once again with Valley, I just, want, I just want it to last a few seconds, and then get the thing up, and what do you know, it's running fine. Okay, so somewhere between 1550 and 1575, there's a catch. the top corner will say 1728 megahertz and oh there we go it's hers again all right so it's not 1550 after all 1525 anything above 1500 or even that 1500 is incredibly impressive for no over voltage So 108. That will get us to 1526. And I guess I don't need to reset it because now it's showing fine. Alright, once again, heaven, or I guess valley because that shows the clock speed. Or valley or whatever you call it nowadays. Now it's saying 1703 megahertz up there, but of course that is wrong. I want to get through at least one loop of this, and then we'll see if anything good happens. Or I guess anything bad if you want to be specific. Thing so far, 1525 seems to be its limit without over voltage. Of course, adding more voltage will keep it stable, but of course, if you can, have a voltage either low or off. That will um, improve life expectancy, I guess, of the card. And it's doing pretty good. Um, admittedly, I would need to do more testing, but it looks like 1525, right about, is what it likes to be at, without adding any over voltage. Even so, it only goes up to 50, like plus 50. Like, I've seen plus 120, and what cards do that? Like, those, if you get, like, a good core, and then you can go over, like, to 120, I must give you some insane capacity to overclock. But, I guess next thing I'll do is just let the Fermark do its thing. I 
and let it do this for a nice long time and I'll come back and see if anything changed. Actually in order to get it to do its thing, it's going to be at max power. That gets us up to 1525 megahertz. So I'll see you in a while when this is all done and hopefully not crashed. Alright, after doing some testing, um, 1525 was pretty stable. I suspect I could probably get up to 1535, but I don't have all year. So I will leave that that. So that 1525 is the highest stable thing you can get to without adding any voltage. If I were to add voltage, I wouldn't be surprised if I could get to 1600. However, I shall leave that for another day. If you want me, if you want me to do that, leave a like and a comment. Thanks, Gameboy. See you next time.